Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE. Covering IBM World of Watson 2016. Brought to you by IBM. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in the Mandalay Bay for day one wrap up of the IBM World of Watson event conference. This is the encapsulation of all the big data events from IOD, Information On Demand, 10 years ago to just last year, IBM Insight, and the Insight economy is now up level to World of Watson, using the Watson brand and product name, but there's a lot more than Watson here. It's a lot of goodness around IOT and other existing IBM data products. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante, head of research at wikibon.com, co-founder of SiliconANGLE Media, as well as myself, co-founder of SiliconANGLE Media. Breaking it down, Dave, this is the wrap-up segment so what do you think? I mean, we had a lot of people on. I was just very impressed with this Bob Lord guy. He's a, yeah. you know, he's a web 1.0 guy, been through web 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, now we're on cognitive. IBM is taking that pioneering mojo in digital and bringing it into a user experience in the B2B space, bringing B2C to B2B. Um, that's a great, great uh, attraction. Bob Picciano came on, laid out the business of the analytics group. What do you say, $18 billion uh, business? Eight, 18 and a half billion. 18 and a half billion. He has been, his trajectory, I mean, there's some zigs in there, maybe a zag once in a while, but just, you know, on a path so, basis, they've been directionally correct so, now for, I'd say, a good four or five years. So I want to stay on that for just a second. So actually, I want to up level just a second. You and I were talking at lunch about the, sort of the three businesses, data center and cloud, analytics and big data, and cognitive, AI, IOT, as sort of the third bucket. IBM, my view anyway, sucked all the oxygen out of the market with regard to big data. IBM owned that and, and won, basically, the big data. You're seeing all the, not all, but many of the big data companies struggling, some of the public companies are really hurting. IBM is doing very, very well in big data, and what they did is they took this collection of things like Cognos and their information management business, their, their analytics business, et cetera, put it together, call it the Insight Economy, and then IBM Insight, the, the flagship show, really, of IBM for several years, dominated. And they super glued their analytics business to the big data, data theme, and they crushed it. Now that's evolving, and it's quite interesting to see. So, Bob Picciano's business is half, almost half of IBM's strategic initiatives. That's pretty substantial. What are the strategic initiatives? I mean, to edu educate the folks, what are, the, what are they? Okay, so it's, it's cloud, it's analytics, it's IOT, really are the, are the, are the, are the big three. You know, there's part of that that is security. It's everything that's growing <laughs> inside of IBM. But they're not strategic what initiatives like as a one-off, they're business units, it's, it's their business strategy, right? Well, yes, and, and it was interesting to hear, uh, I think it was Bob talk about, and, I, and I, I wanted to ask him, go back to those days when they were planning on entering these big markets. Bob Lord talked about the hard markets that they've gone after, the hard problems that they've solved. Oncology, you know, the big healthcare problems, security. Those are big markets that IBM, I'm sure, took a long time to understand, right? When IBM goes to understand a market, it does big studies, it spends a lot of money, you know, researching, and it gets the answer. And then it says, okay, here's where we're going. Cloud, you know, analytics, yeah. IOT, cognitive. And now you're starting to see that. So those, those areas comprise the strategic initiatives. They are decades long initiatives. Um, other big strategic initiatives for IBM was, was e-commerce. You remember that, you know, back in the day. Uh, you know, the web sphere grew out of that. So, so thinking about, John, those sort of three buckets that we talked about that were sort of your, you laid it out. Data center and cloud, analytics and big data, IOT and, and cognitive and AI. What do you see IBM headed? Well, I mean, like, look, when we go to events, we try to use, use the, the, the intro segment and the wrap up to kind of do our reporting as well as commentary of what's IBM. Mm -hmm. And what I'm, what I'm about to report is a little bit controversial, but I will tell you that, you know, it's what people are talking about in the hallways and I got sources on this. And that is that IBM is actually cutting the old guard out of IBM to bring in new blood. And it's causing a little people to freak out a little bit, but I think it's, it's needed. IBM has been this big machinery for decades and decades and they've done great work. They're still innovating, but there's going to be some people who are going to be forced out. And, and the, the comments that I've been hearing are things like, if you're an old time IBMer and you're not moving fast enough or you're causing 
things to go slower, you're going to be gone. And I heard that came down from the top from Ginny Romney. So, you know, that's a culture that's consistent with the Staples guy who we talked to today who said, hey, you bring in new blood, you bring in agile, it's a wholly different mind game. So, you know, uh, not mind game, but like uh, developer game. But IBM is basically saying, look at we got to be agile. We have land and expand business model. They're growing in the strategic areas. If you don't have your running shoes on, you're out. And I think that's healthy. I don't think that's negative on IBM. HP, um, we hear, is laying off some folks. That's just a pure cost cutting, you know, knock it down, not just a kind of clean house. They have too many people there. I think IBM is a little bit more of like a cultural thing. Dave, so this is a big moment within IBM. All things are pumping on all cylinders. The VMware deal with AWS was interesting. That might put IBM on its heels in its cloud business. But analytics has value propositions that were good bets. Now do they have the execution potential with the personnel to pull it off? Well, I mean, IBM's such a large company. You bring up an excellent point about the cultural shift. But what IBM has done historically over the years, it gets behind some mainspring of profit. I'll call it. You know, it used to be the mainframe, and then it was e-commerce, and then you had these sort of orthogonal businesses that were throwing off cash, and they sort of artificially plugged in. You know, the, the storage guys were talking about e-commerce. Okay, fine. And they're probably talking about Watson today. Okay, it's sort of not a clean fit, but the vast majority of the company gets behind this. They dog food it, they use it internally, and then this big machine starts to gain momentum through the IBM distribution channel, and boom. And the one thing about IBM is, Yes, revenue's been flat you know, to down each year. But How many consecutive quarters of loss did they have? About 18, I think. No, no, not losses, no. IBM's not lost money. No, they've, 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 uh, they've no, shrunk. A they've uh, reduced 18 consecutive quarters of... Of year-to-year -year reduction in revenue. Um, and, and basically they were flat on a constant currency basis this past, past quarter, which is a milestone Does Watson for IBM. Help, them, help them with that? Well, yeah, the strategic initiatives are now 40% of the business. But, so IBM throws off in the last 12 months about $13.5 billion in free cash flow. It's a substantial cash machine. And so you just can't ignore that. Now, IBM returns a huge portion, about two-thirds of that cash, to shareholders in the form of dividends and stock buybacks, which has helped prop the stock up. And look at if the stock is undervalued, it's a good buy. Look, here's the direct question. You know what I'm saying about that? Yeah, but here's so the they've been buying stock back for years. If this stock takes off, that's a huge advantage for IBM for all the stock they've taken off the market. So here's the question, I'll have my opinion, but I want to get your take first. Is IBM moving the shells around on the numbers just to kind of you know, look good on paper, or are they actually playing the long game in your opinion? Yes, <laughs> they're both? doing both, <laughs> I mean, of course. Every company does this, you see. Uh, Amazon uh, did it. Amazon Web Services were hiding the ball, moving things around. Oracle. Amazon hit a, uh, Oracle. You know, clearly does it. Uh, EMC did it. You know, for years. Certainly VMware. They change the way in which they report. Makes it harder to model. They give IBM, for example, will not tell you what how, what Watson revenues are. How absurd is that? You know? <laughs> <laughs> they report on all different things. This, you know, this geography, that geography. This. Why do they do that? I suspect because the number's not as big <laughs> as they'd like to see yet. And then or, at some or point- Or is it an ingredient enabling in other things? Well, that's me. Uh, or the jury's still they out. They count it. I mean, no, they, they count it. But they, they don't want to track, they don't want Wall Street tracking that performance per se. You know, they're- That horse is not out of the barn yet. Yeah, that's probably pretty lumpy because there's probably still a lot of services involved in that, right? So it's probably a little unclear. It's probably less predictable. So let's be careful until, look at Amazon, same thing. They weren't reporting AWS you know, until they really had their act together. There's probably some double counting. I think they got forced to break it out, didn't they? I mean, IBM, was, IBM I mean, AWS you know, like, put it out there. People want to know what, what Watson is. IBM won't talk about it. They'll talk about the growth. All right, so here's a question I asked Bob Picciano. He's like, I can bring the, the heat, and he kind of cut me off, and I had to rephrase. What I was trying to get <laughs> to was, I'll ask you this question. Can IBM as a culture of sales and the very marketing-oriented culture they actually used to call sales reps marketing representatives, not sales. They didn't want to have that used car uh, salesman kind of approach. And they had big ticket items, there was big deals, they had relationship selling, it was really strategic. They, had, they, they listened to customers, and they still do have that. But now as you go cloud, the transaction point, entry points, land and expand. Smaller ticket items, lower price, but expand net contract value. This is how they are growing. This is what cloud companies do. This is what the new normal is, Dave. Can IBM's culture handle this new sales culture, contracts, operational machinery? Can they make the machinery of processing and operationalizing their business be nimble enough to do land and expand, and do they have the sales culture, in your opinion? 
I mean, a big part of that is, is their channel and their ecosystem. You know, and IBM's obviously been you know, very strong, belly to belly sales company, but you know, the ecosystem is growing and I think a key to that, John, is developers. Can they get leverage out of developers? So, you know, you've educated me over the years on, on developers. You got companies that have to push to get developers and many of those fail. You got companies where the developers just come to them. I mean, the best example is Amazon. ServiceNow is kind of an outlier example where you know, they had this burgeoning developer community that exploded. Obviously, Microsoft, very developer friendly, Google, Apple. IBM had to push, right? And it seems like it's starting to take hold. Still not, you know, you get the Alpha Modus example, still not enough of those, but it, it looks like Watson is that big differentiator for, for IBM. But I, I'll, I'll defer to you, what's your take on certainly my assertion, it's really that key to that land and expand, yeah. in my mind, is developers, and are they succeeding? My opinion is, Dave, I think IBM is struggling with this. I think, I, I don't have any firm data on this, just buzz and hallway conversation around the fact that it takes a lot longer than people think to make these kinds of cultural shifts, especially with sales organizations and you have channels. These are, as you said, cash machines, right? So, you know, and they have other business, by the way. So Watson, even though this is called the Watson Show, they're taking a real risk there calling it Watson because it's a product name. It's really more, Insight was actually a better name, some people think, and so, so IBM is a cash machine. So you have all this machinery pumping out all this cash, and yes, they got to get to the news. So I think, it's not as going as well as they, as they are saying, one, but that might not be a bad thing because it takes time anyway. The key is, I believe it's a long game. In my conversation with, with all the execs that we talk to, um, that I've had one-on-ones with, you can see it in their eyes. They're not giving you the, you know, the canned answers. They're truly playing the long game. And we've tested them over the years here in theCUBE and to see if they've had any body swerves on strategy, they're not. They're marching down the same thing. They're going cloud, and I think they're making the investment and they're going to take the medicine and wait for that first quarter to pop up and, and kick up with a new trajectory on new revenues. And that's going to come from the sales culture, it's going to come from the operational machinery. So I think IBM and the Gini, the Gini comment about getting rid of people who are in the way, the older IBMers, the processes might be too long, might be too many forms to fill out. Well, the, the hard all, question. All that stuff is built into the DNA, so they got to, they got to, they got to get that oiled up a little bit. Well, the hard question that I, I, I wanted to ask Bob, we ran out of time and he wouldn't answer it anyway, but IBM gross margins declined in the quarter. And I believe part of the reason was the shift toward the ratable model. They, they, haven't, they haven't ramped up their cloud business you know, yet. I, 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 would, I would want to know from him, and again, he wouldn't answer, or he'd have to kill me, he would joke, um, is, are the, is he experiencing that in his in his you know, $18 billion, $19 billion analytics business. I'm not as freaked out about that, John, as some of the analysts are. I mean, I can understand why they're a little concerned, because you would think that as, as the, the mix shifts from professional services to cloud and software as a service, that margins would go up. But you look at a lot of these companies now that are, that are making that shift, uh, the gross margins start out smaller, and then they got to get to you know, volume. So I suspect that's what's happening, but don't know for sure. Uh, but to your point, no question IBM is playing the long game, right? This is a company that invested in China decades before anybody else did. You know, they were investing in, and still are, in, in Africa, uh, beyond South Africa. Uh, they make these big bets well, well ahead of time, and then that's really what Watson is. That was what their analytics business was. They decided to get out of the microelectronics business, um, which is an interesting, an interesting little data point there for you. Uh, they decided to get out of the x86 business, chasing differentiation and value, not revenue. Um, the microelectronics business is interesting. IBM had about a $1.7 billion annual licensing business, IP licensing. That's declined now, it's still about a billion dollars. I wanted to ask Bob as well, do they participate in that? IBM's got so much intellectual property, that is just like 100% gross profit, right? So, you know, can they get that back up? They lost that when they, when they sold off, sort of gave away, you know, paid somebody to take the microelectronics business. Yeah, and you know, I'm impressed with Bob Picciano. I got to say, oh, you know, yeah. again, we've had one-on-ones with him, and you know, we challenge him, and he's not afraid to answer the questions. And that's the, the I have the most respect for executives like Bob Picciano because when they stand up to the hard question, Dave, um, they're basically saying, I'm ready to answer anything. And that's what I like about him. But also, he's got a great sixth sense. He's got a good nose for the business, and he knows the technology fabric of landscape and he, he set a course I think is solid. The question is, 
when does the fruit come off the tree? You know, so like at some point, the, this portfolio plantation strategy has to bear some fruit. So to me, that's where I look for the rubber to meet the road. I want to look for that quarter growth that's going to be not a negative. So they've had 18 straight quarters of, of down revenue. That's the first thing that I would ask Watson. How do I increase next quarter's revenue? Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a good okay. question for Watson. Well, I think we're getting very close, John, and I think you're asking the right question about the long game, and I believe that IBM is playing that long game, and that is why, so the key for them is they got to get those strategic initiatives up over 50%, you know, they're over that 40% milestone, now they got to get them up over 50, 60%, and that's going to drive the growth, and the key question will be is, did they make the right bets, and are those bets sustainable, or was it a, you know, dead cat bounce, and I don't think it is a dead cat bounce, I think that they're making big bets for the long term, transitioning their massive customer base to these new growth initiatives. Yeah. It's a winning strategy. The, the cloud opinion. game is a leverage game. So we talked about this with um, um, the monetization question. So we had um, Interpol uh, Bandari, okay? I asked him a specific question and we got onto data monetization. <laughs> and the data monetization question is, is hard because if you try to go too early, okay, to grab the cash, you can get ahead of yourselves and fall flat on your face. So the monetization question brings up the same question with the cloud. The leverage of the cloud, Dave, is all about when does it kick up? There is a slingshot effect of, of, of revenue. And the question is, when is that moment where, okay, the strategy kicks in, you get the flywheel of the ecosystem, you have SaaS products, platform services, and then the revenue kicks up. That, to me, is going to be the, the tell sign if this thing plays off. Now, if IBM gets scared and pulls the plug too early on that strategy, I think they got to go, all in, go big or go home on that strategy. Listen, I, listen, I don't think they're going to pull the plug. I told you, I've said this before, the number one question I used to get from, from you know, folks in the industry was, how long does Ginny have? And I used to answer, as long, long enough to prove she's right. And I, I hope I'm right on that. The only, I don't see IBM you know, pivoting now. I mean, it's now finally starting to, to take hold. So, All right. I, I would be very surprised to see Dave, that. Dave, great to, great to host with you on day one. You're watching theCUBE. Day one wrap up here at the World of Watson, the Mandalay Bay. It's theCUBE live on the set here at the World of Watson. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow, all day coverage. This is theCUBE, good night. Today, I am helping people work better.